All right, to watch this video for Wednesday, May 11th, you can see a nice move in the market here. Spy candle looks really good. Looks like it was a powerful move today. And then when you look at the intraday, you can see it was a very tight, slow grinding channel, right? Um, it spent over three hours in a 50 cent range. So it wasn't as great a day as for a day trader as you'd think. Um, I did make a call that I'm proud of in um, Soda, Soda Stream, S-O-D-A, and it had the nice breakout. Call that I'm proud of and a trade that I'm embarrassed of. And if you're a day trader, you know exactly you've done it, right? Um, I identified this one as a really nice opportunity when it looked like this. My call was 1670, which would be just over this lower high here. It's also a 15 minute buy setup, but I'm showing you five minute candles. 1670, 1650, you ready for this? Breaks the high of the day, and then does a slow grind. It finally got going here, um, but if you knew what I made on it, it's absolutely humiliating. I mean, I, I made, I think, a little over $300 on it, but it never came close to really um, what should have been a stop out, right? At least not for the next hour. Um, and so I absolutely scalped that one instead of letting it run. Um, you know, and if I'd have known that the market was going to be in this in incredibly boring grind the rest of the day, and I'd have known, you know, what I was sitting on, a great entry on a stock that moved up $1.50 from my call on 20 cents risk, uh, I certainly would have held some. But unfortunately, we don't have a crystal ball. And I, again, I had just a minimal gains today. Um, but again, identified a pretty nice one there. And speaking of soda, I'm putting it back on watch for tomorrow. Um, very nice volume for this stock and a nice breakout. So it's a thinner stock. Um, so maybe we get a red to green or something like that tomorrow, right? Kind of reminds me of Yelp. Um, Yelp, we you know put it on watch the very next day. And if you saw the video the next day, it still gave a really nice move um, right from the open. So we might have the same thing in soda. So it goes back on watch, even though you know, messing with it tomorrow feels like chasing, um, but it goes on watch nonetheless. WWAV, nice little breakout today. Um, and again, look at this one. On an intraday basis, put in a very nice move in the opening 15, maybe 18 minutes, and then never deviated from the opening, let's say opening 20 minute range, just a slow channel grind. There's just no trades in it after that, right? Um, so it goes back on watch for tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we get a red to green or a nice, uh, push through today's high or something, some kind of setup that we look for, um, you know, certainly has more room to move. Today Today looks like day one of a breakout, um, you know, out of this uh, out of this range, kind of maybe even an inverse um, cup and handle, you can kind of see our head and inverse head and so inverse head and shoulders, you can kind of picture shoulder there, head there and shoulder, but um, yeah, you know, maybe a cup and handle is a better way to put it. You kind of have a cup here and then the sideways move anyway. Anyway, you slice it today is kind of a breakout of this bottoming pattern. Um, so it could have a, it could be doing a multi-day run and HAIM, which is in the same space, is up like four or five days in a row. So let's keep our eyes on WWAB tomorrow. Um, MXL, this one had a nice volume spike. And if you look to the left, it's still, you know, you've got a, a recent high above today's candle. So again, I don't want to chase, but maybe let's look at it on an intraday basis. Yeah, I mean, it did the initial pop, slow channel grind, doing nothing the rest of the day, right? But this is, you know, this is an area of consolidation, consolidating this nice move, right? So maybe over today's high, we make a run at this 19, the recent high. So that one's worth having on a chart, in my opinion, because of the long afternoon consolidation. Electronic Arts, EA, nothing very interesting here, except that in after hours, it moved up to almost 70. I think uh, right now it's trading at 69.25. So here's 69. So it's trading right about here in after hours. Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm certain that must be on earnings. I didn't even look up the news, but this will be a morning gap play. We'll see if we can get a setup in it. Which brings me to um, ATVI. I think this might be worth watching as a bounce play because same space, right? Both video game makers and ATVI on earnings had a nice pop two days lower. Well, um, Electronic Arts, EA might get this, you know, uh, if that thing breaks and runs, uh, it might get people also pouring into Activision, ATVI, after nice earnings. Remember, these are the uh, Call of Duty folks. So this is, you know, if you have a, a teenage boy or you've ever had a teenage boy, you know Call of Duty very well, right? So this one uh, might be ready to turn back higher. Even without Electronic Arts, I was going to put this on Bounce Watch because of the gap up. A couple red days, you know, came down into the gap. This one might be ready to turn up tomorrow. So that is... Um, that's Activision ATVI. Another one that's based on after hours is Fossil, F-O-S-L, closed at 4010. Um, it's trading at 2781 right now. So 
This low back here in January was 28.26. So this might be one of those that opens at or around recent lows. Okay, I'm gonna put a line there right now as a matter of fact. And sometimes these things run all day. Um, so we're gonna watch for maybe a, a push down and then a, a red to green, it might be a good long. I'll give you an example, um, Lumber Liquidators LL gapped down to these recent 11 lows and ran all day, right? So sometimes a gap down is a buy and not, not a short. So anyway, that's uh, kind of my mindset on FOSL. We'll watch that one open tomorrow. SRPT, um, I haven't been watching this for a couple days, but this has been a great mover. Um, you can see it's kind of getting boring the last couple days, but we've had some really nice moves in it um, over the past couple weeks. And I think it's time to start watching it again. It didn't do anything today, just stayed in its opening uh, opening 15 minute range, but it's certainly interesting up over 18. Maybe it makes a uh, run at this uh, 1850 from um, whatever day. This would have been Monday, I guess. And then maybe, uh, you know, kind of breaks a trend line to the upside here. So um, I'm going to have that one on a chart. I always say this, it doesn't cost me anything to have it on a chart. So um, W, a after the pop here, yesterday or uh, Monday, then you had a quiet inside day today. So maybe a third day play there. I think that's worth watching. And uh, you know, it's, um, what was the symbol? I'm trying to think. That's right, it was De DeVry, DV is a good example. Um, and I, I blew this. I was watching this on this day and it gave no trade. And, and this is one of my favorite setups when you get a big pop, probably on earnings and then a quiet inside red day. Um, a lot of times like you'll hear me say in these videos, uh, it's on watch for a third day move and look what it did today. And I skillfully uh, forgot to have that one on a chart, but that's a good example um, you know, of why W might be worth a look. W didn't really have a breakout, but it did have nice volume um, on Monday. So uh, it doesn't look as clean as DeVry, DB, but still worth a look, okay? SYNC, I believe they had earnings after the bell today. Okay, I'm not, not positive, I think they did though. Um, and this is the one that had news with AT&T. So you had the gap up on over 25 million shares. Lower high the next day, lower high the next day, lower high today. Um, in after hours, it's trading at 321. Okay, I just paused the video so I could look it up. Um, today is May 10th and after hours, uh, the time is 406 for this news release on uh, today after hours. And it says, Cinecore, S-Y-N-C, beats first quarter 2016 guidance, grows margins and wins AT&T contract sets 300 million revenue targets target. So if you watched my video yesterday, I talked about um, earnings might give you a buying opportunity because I, I don't expect their earnings to be stellar um, because uh, any earnings they have will be from pre AT&T. So um, this has done a nice job coming down at really a pretty big reversal today. Um, it doesn't look like earnings affected it to the downside in after hours. Um, I, this is the first green close. In other words, first close above its open since the gap up. Uh, I think this is worth watching tomorrow, especially if earnings don't affect it. It looks really good over 340. Um, this is 15 minute candle. So let's keep our eyes on this one. Um, I'm showing 26 million in the float. So this does have potential to really squeeze if it gets going. Um, I think a lot of people were hesitant to pile in this one last few days because earnings were coming out. So anyway, looks kind of unaffected by that. Um, and then let's see, Weight Watchers, WTW. This isn't uh, a great setup, but it had earnings a few days ago. And I mentioned that it was kind of holding this 12. Every time it gets below 12, it's finding buyers. And then today started to sneak back up. So here it is on 15 minute candles. I mean, I, you know, you had this one pop back here to 1260. Uh, you had a, you know, a quiet move today to 1260 and it's just flagging below that. Um, you know, so over 1260, this might be worth a look, 1262-ish. They do pile into Weight Watchers at times, uh, go, go into five minute candles. Uh, you see here, um, a really big move in about 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, some of these other candles are nice looking as well, um, but then I'd have to go back pretty far. I mean, a pretty nice move there over 30 minutes. So Weight Watchers is one to watch, especially if people start uh, thinking, okay, 12 is the bottom, then it's up from here. Okay, so it's, it's found support at 12. So anyway, um, that's it. It's not my, <clears throat> I said this yesterday too. It, these The last two days have not been like riddled with amazing setups. But uh, you know, if you look at SodaStream from this morning, we found that on the, you know, as a morning gap play. Um, and I had a, you know, $1.50 move on 20 cents risk. So those morning gap plays can be stellar. No, I didn't catch that. <laughs> like I said, I settled for 300, what probably should have been closer to, closer to 3000, but that's just my own pathetic trading um, anyway. 
uh, gap plays can be really lu lucrative. Um, and, and just to further talk about SodaStream real quick, another reason, and I'm not making excuses because I'm just peeved at myself, but another reason that I killed that quicker than I probably should have is because in the past, I guess I could put up Soda while I'm talking about it. In the past, Soda um, has given like short squeezes, and actually you could argue that it did today, but in the past when you had a gap up in Soda like this, and then you start to get through the high of the day, it would have ripped, and I know most of you traders know what I'm talking about, this would have ripped a dollar in five minutes, right? Um, and the fact that it didn't do that, you know, five minutes after it broke the highs was coming back down, um, it just spooked me. But again, still, piss, to, to use a trading term, piss poor trading on my part. Um, but that's another reason that I kind of killed soda before I should have. I thought, hey, this thing isn't going to go and shows how smart I'm not. All right. So we'll be uh, putting a list together, gap plays in the morning, and we'll spend the day looking for other setups as well and listening to the news squawks and seeing if we can catch a news play as well. So enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll talk to you tomorrow.